morning. It's Steve trying to get my glove back on here after turning on the phone because it's cold. So I thought it was cold last time. <clears throat> yeah. And okay, this is really really something in southern Illinois. Okay, the snow has actually lasted for 24 hours and you know the yard is still white I mean it looks like somebody's just dusted it with powdered sugar but it's white ish so yeah I know you folks in Michigan and other parts up north you're just laughing <clears throat> but our cold mud is hard now so If you Google the, the search phrase missed messages, the first five pages of results have to do with a video game called Missed Messages. Now, I've never played the game myself, okay? It's um, described as a visual novella in the romantic horror category. Now, romance isn't a big thing for me, okay? Uh, as in, I don't like to read romantic novels. Um, and horror is definitely not something I gravitate towards. So I haven't played this game myself. I, But as I was preparing for talking with you today, I ended up doing this search. Um, can't even remember how I end up with missed messages. Um, but as a result of that, I watched some spoilers on YouTube of the game. And it turns out that this game, um, you start out as a college co-ed. Uh, and you wake up in your room after a dream in which you lose a friend in a blinding blizzard. And you wake up a little disoriented, and then you spend the game um, exploring your room and interacting with objects in the room and people living your life as a college student. You do classes, you look at class assignments, you look at your, your uh, messages on social media and life gets busy but you have to pay attention because if you miss messages in this game someone close to you someone that you care about in this virtual reality ends up dying committing suicide because you missed messages. Now the game was designed by a college student at Stanford um, two years ago and it's still the top of Google search results because we have all missed messages and lived to regret it. And the consequences can be brutal emotionally or literally. Which reminds me of a day in February, <clears throat> several decades ago. Um, the signs were all there. The hints had been dropped as I drove into work. Uh, there were hearts in the windows when we went to Walmart. There was candy on the aisles. Uh, Everything was there. I had marked it on my calendar. And yet here it was, the morning of Valentine's Day. I'm driving into work and I realize I haven't gotten anything for Vivian. And I made a mental note. As soon as the flower shop opens up, I need to call and order her some flowers. Now the flower shops here in town don't open till 9 or 10 and my day as a doctor started at 7, 8. By 9 or 10 I was going to be busy so I, I, this mental note was really important. I had to remember this. 
And I did. I did. I remembered. Okay? I was in the middle of juggling a mother in labor who was about to deliver, a grandpa who had just been admitted from the emergency room with, with a heart attack and <clears throat> was in intensive care and needed attention, and I had an office full of patients who were becoming less patient. I was juggling all of these things and all of a sudden I looked at the clock and it was 9.30 and I remembered. But my nurse said that the OB unit nurse just called and you need to get over there now. And so as I ran out of the door of the office, I turned to my nurse and I said, would you please order flowers for my wife from the flower shop? And there was something on her face that let me know that what I had just asked was inappropriate, but I was in a hurry and I raced out and I, the last words I heard out of her mouth was, yes, I'll get it done. <clears throat> so when Vivian called me in the early afternoon and said, what did you get me for Valentine's Day? I confidently said, you've got a surprise on your way from the flower shop. Mm -hmm. An hour or so later, she showed up at the office. And by the time she made it to me, her, sto her face was anything but sunshine and the roses, okay? It was a storm cloud uh, approaching hurricane force because you see uh, the flowers hadn't arrived and she had thought well you know it's Mother's Day they're busy they probably haven't had time to bring it out I'll go pick up my flowers so she had gone to the flower shop to pick up her flowers only to be told I'm sorry, there's no flowers here for you, Mrs. Scott. So she had come to the office thinking, well, maybe Steve picked them up himself and, and just hasn't had time to bring them home and deliver them to me. But when she spoke to my nurse to ask if she knew where her flowers were, my nurse got this horrified look on her face and said, oh no, Mrs. Scott, I forgot to order them. He asked me to well, <clears throat> you can guess that um, that Valentine's Day um, has not gone down in history as a day that Steve wowed Vivian with his love and romance. For almost a year now, we've been getting together and examining touchstones from the Bible. A touchstone is a tool used in the jewelry trade to determine how pure a gold alloy is. You have to rub the, ju the, the jewel, uh, rub the, the gold against this stone and then based on the color of the streak and certain chemical reactions you can you can determine how pure the gold is in that ring or whatever by touchstone i'm been talking about things that i find in the lives of the pe spiritual lives of the people in the bible that i use to assay to test the purity of my spiritual experience, the reality, the genuineness of my spiritual experience. And today's the last of those touchstones. It's all about missed messages. Does God have a message for his people today that's special? Book of Revelation has messages to seven churches. And from the earliest 
earliest commentaries that we have from, from on the book of Revelation, those messages have been understood as applying to a prophetic, as being prophetic, applying to, to certain time periods. Sorry, I'm having to get my gloves back on because it's cold. Um, certain time periods in Christian history. But as the touchstone of revelation, of God communicating with humans, has been discarded, now you may think, what do you mean, discarded? Well, yes, the concept of revelation, as we talked about many, many moons ago, the concept that God actually communicates with people is something that a lot has been discarded by a lot of Christians. And as we have discarded that, commentators have looked at these these messages in Revelation from a, from different aspects. Okay, the commentators have exchanged that lens for a literal lens. These are literal messages to literal churches, and need to be understood that way, or as a personal through a personal lens. Um, personalizing it and applying this metaphorically to our lives. Now, both approaches have merit, okay? I'm not dissing these, okay? I'm big on contextualization, on understanding the context within which a passage of Scripture was written and, and is speaking to. And I'm big on personal application as well. A theory of truth will never save us. Ideas will never save us. It's only when they become real personally in our lives and transform our lives that we will experience the salvation that God wants for us. But discarding the prophetic intent of the passage is like picking up the salt and pepper off of the table and sweeping the whole rest of the meal onto the floor. Okay, We miss the point. Now, I'm not going to go through all seven messages. Okay, the, th the seventh message, the last one, to the Church of the Laodiceans from a prophetic time timeline applies to those people at the end of time those people when the world is about to end. And as I've shared with you, my belief is that we're living in that time. That's how I experience, experience reality. Laodicea was a city that was famous in Turkey that was famous for its medicinal hot springs and for an eye salve that they manufactured. That's the context. The message is simple. Get real. You profess to be my followers, but when I look at your lives, you're anything but my followers. You dress the same as the people around you. You watch the same entertainment. You have the same career goals, the same definitions of success for your children. Everything else. You are just like those who ignore or reject me. That's the message that Jesus has for this church. Sure, you do religious things. You say religious things. You believe religious things. You even put religious symbols on your cars and on your jewelry. But your life denies your words. You claim to know the difference between right and wrong. What is real? What is fake? what is true, what is false, but your actions speak louder than your words. You're like a bowl of cereal that's set too long. You're soggy and lukewarm. One bite and I want to spit you out. That's Steve's paraphrase of the message to the Laodiceans. You can read it in, in Revelation in the messages to the seven churches. This is not the gospel that we are asked to tell to the world. This is a message for us. 
the spiritual people, the religious people, the church people, the people in the pews. This message is for us. You are like a bowl of soggy cereal. Appetizing, right? It's not subtle or hidden. It's black and white, plain as the nose on my face. But we miss the message in so many ways. We're too busy to take the time to really, really think about it. We're confident. Assurance of salvation is important to us. What do you mean you want to spit us out? Or we're too tired with, oh man, every time I go to church they tell me that I'm, I really need to repent. And there's this constant, constant, constant hammering that I need to repent. Get over it. Or we're too distracted by what's going on in life. Missed messages. Now I'm not going to unpack the rest of the message for you. Because I don't want to miss this message myself. It is a call for me to examine whether I have truly committed my life to God or whether I am lukewarm. Too often we rush past conviction to reassure, reassure ourselves that we have it all together. That, yeah, when resurrection morning comes, you know where I'm going to be. I'll meet you in heaven. I'll look for you around the tree of life. The message isn't for us. We just happen to have been included in a, in a group text by mistake, right? But friends, I don't think that's the case. Jesus knows my heart better than I do. He loves me more than anyone, even Vivian. And I had better stop, sit down, and listen seriously to the message that he has for his children today. You're lukewarm. You're not hot. You're not cold. I wish you were on fire for me. If I don't, if we don't, then missing the signs of a friend headed for suicide Missing uh, Valentine's Day will be minor compared to the catastrophe that my life is headed for. The consequences of missing this message will be much more painful than the wrath of Vivian on Valentine's Day. time for a reality check, my friends, in our lives. We've looked at touchstone after touchstone after touchstone. And every one, I've looked at my heart and said, Steve, is this real in your life? So are you listening, friends? Don't miss the message. Be safe, be prudent, but above all, keep looking up. I hope to see you again next week.